Splunk produces software that makes big data scalable and usable. Yeah, when I joined Splunk, it was a single product company. Uh, today, we're multi-product. We're in the cloud, we're on-prem. Our growth has just been crazy. It's just been phenomenal to see the different ways that our customers use in Splunk today. Splunk standardized on Atlassian because the engineers standardize on Atlassian. We use Jira to manage and drive our agile development efforts. The various scrum teams will use Confluence to share information and collaborate together. We use HipChat as our internal messaging system and we have all the products tightly integrated together. We use Bitbucket as our source code management system for all the source code and products that we produce. Moving to Git definitely is a challenge. There's cultural issues in engineering to deal with. Bitbucket really helped us overcome some of those challenges because it was flexible, scalable, and it integrated perfectly with the Atlassian ecosystem at Splunk. We use Bitbucket Data Center to host our code and to drive all our collaboration around that code. So creating branches, creating pull requests, iterating on code reviews, iterating on features is all done through Bitbucket Data Center. The move to Git and Bitbucket has been a tremendous success at Splunk. Since adopting Bitbucket, we've seen almost a three to four time increase in the number of code reviews that are being done. Not only that, we're seeing an increase in the quality of code reviews. The biggest benefit since we've adopted Bitbucket has really been twofold. One, we feel like we're set up for success for the next 10 years. And the other one is it allows us to more easily and more reliably create better software for our customers and do it faster. When we're looking at all the different product lines that we're managing today, we have to have a rock solid solution and Bitbucket meets those needs. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Wong. I'm a Principal Product Manager for Jira Software from the Sydney office. Um, and it's, it's awesome to be here in Singapore. Thanks for uh, taking some time out from, from your lunch to come to this talk. Um, Singapore uh, has a bit of a special place in my heart. I, I came here in a, on an exchange here at the National University of Singapore, and my first job actually out was at a, a startup here. So it's good to be, good to be back here and uh, presenting this uh, uh, to you. And also thanks to Achilles, who's our Atlassian expert here. Atlassian doesn't put people out on site, so we rely on local experts to be able to provide the sales support training. Um, we have a lot of things you can do with our products, so integrating them with your systems as well. Um, so thanks as well to Achilles. Um, today, I, I thought maybe this topic would be interesting, which is um, uh, it's, it's actually a feature in our product and uh, that we've built to try and help teams um, get more confident at releasing software. Um, so it ties together a bit of uh, agile principles a bit of Git principles and a bit of continuous uh, integration delivery um, to try and put those together and, uh, and make, make uh, releasing a lot less stressful than it has been. Um, obviously, we have our, our products, Jira Software, Bitbucket, and Bamboo that, that um, follow through with this when you, when you link them up, which, which is what this feature is about. Um, so uh, how many of you here use Jira, just so I can get a sense of where I, how deep I go? Um, so as you know, Jira has been known uh, for a long time. It's been a, a, a good issue tracker. We brought out uh, Greenhopper and Jira Agile to help you do things like Scrum and Kanban. Um, and really where it starts here with, with having your eye on the release is getting a plan together, right? So it starts at the beginning of the software development cycle by putting a, a nice backlog together. And if you go to Jira, uh, we've got a whole backlog here that lets you maintain that stack rank, break things down. You can manage them in epics and versions, estimate those, those story points. Uh, it then moves on to like making sure that we're building the right thing. We then, we then have a board, and this has been very popular with teams, just to visualize your work in progress. So teams really like this because it, it helps them collaborate and, uh, on, on building, getting through their sprints or their, or their iterations in Kanban. Um, but we wanted to take the agile, um, agile bit further, right? Like getting things to done just in your sprint doesn't, doesn't really take us all that way to uh, the Agile ethos of getting um, you know, working software being our best measure of progress. Uh, so we wanted to take that to the next stage, which, which was to help teams with releases. Um, and that's, that's where this comes together. Um, now, in most issue trackers, uh, developing software and releasing it sort of looks like this, right? You get a whole bunch of things you want to do, get them to done, put them in the boat and get them to customers. The customers then use it, they give you feedback and you figure out what to do with that and iterate on that, right? And that, that's what it looks like um, from the outside or what it looks like in theory, but a lot of us have gone through the difficulties of releasing, know that when we look at our releases very often, when we think things are done and we decide to go and release it, it things happen, right? Things come up and surprise us. 
and it's not a great position to be in. Um, what sort of things typically happen, right? So uh, again, back in the issue tracking uh, tool that we use, uh, get, get everything to done, and we typically mark that as a version. If, you can, if you're uh, shipping the cloud maybe continuously, it might be a uh, deployment marker. But anyway, there are a bunch of things that you expected to, to ship. And some things that happen, for example, are certain bits of code that got out there. We didn't have them track for some reason. So unexpected features making their way into um, the release. Sometimes we go to the release and find that there are some things that aren't in the release. And when we look into it, we find that the code wasn't merged or some, something happened. It, it just wasn't in that release that, we, that the, the tracking tool told us was. Um, we also find bugs. Now, bugs can come from various sources. Um, but the one we like to pull out here is bugs that originate from not having peer reviews, right? So things are sort of pushed up in silos, pushed straight into the, to the release, and things are, again, happening unexpectedly. Um, so this is why releases are really difficult, and, and, and I guess how we've come up with this uh, feature to try and bring this all together to make it a lot easier for you. Um, so we, I mean, as Jira is, it's, a, it's an issue tracker. Uh, we, we could have gone down the path of just making this, you know, the status more and more accurate, but we wanted to try and bake in some good practices as well in this process. So there are three um, practices here from, from Git continuous delivery um, that we've, we've tried to put in here to help making releases better. The first one is the principle of branching per issue from, from Git. Um, now we do this at Atlassian, every, every issue starts with a branch. And uh, also if you notice in Jira, you can actually create a branch from that and it starts automatically um, linking that branch to the issue, which makes it really great for tracking, making sure that the, the issue is uh, reflecting really what's happening in the code. Um, so again, we have our issues on the left over there, a bunch of features, things that the business wants to, to implement, and on the right we have the code that implements it. Now if you're using a linear or SVN type, um, or committing straight to, to, to master, um, it can be really hard to actually verify that the, the, the status of those cards are actually as they are. Because you've got all these commits in there, you can't really see if those are the final commits or they're just, or, or, or they're just the first couple, right? Um, it can also be really difficult to un or go back on certain things. So if we wanted to release um, the green stuff without the blue stuff now, it's going to be really hard to go back. So feature branching takes care of this really nicely. And what, what you do is you, from, from master, you create a new, new branch. As you can see here, the feature is now on a, on a unique issue there, in this example, Jira 30. Um, so it, ma it maintains a really nice one-to-one -one relationship between what's, what the issue is and um, actually how you're going to implement this on the branch. And off you go, you, uh, we, we go and, and put our commits onto there, um, which means, hey, we know that this is in progress. And then when we actually merge it back in, we know that this is now done. Um, and the other nice uh, aspect of feature branching is it isolates the work here. So you get all the good benefits of Git where um, people can collaborate on the code um, without, uh, and, and, uh, and build that feature independently of others. Um, and also, I guess the principle here is also that we want to make sure that when we do bring this feature branch back in to our master branch, we do it in a way that's stable, so we're not upsetting our, our ability to release. And that brings us to the next part, which is um, what we want to do is try and keep our branches passing our, our tests. You want to keep them, keep them green, right? which is the next principle of, of continuous integration that we've put into this feature. So again, continuous integration, it's that practice of, of uh, when you, each time you commit, we're running a test and getting that feedback. And the, the real important part here is that we want to know uh, whether we're breaking the builds there and there on the spot so we can fix it while it, you know, the, the code, the context is still fresh in our mind. Um, this is what happens if you don't do continuous integration and branch. You come from a stable version of master, which is good and releasable. You start branching, you start committing, there's no feedback as to whether you've, you've broken anything. Um, so when you try and do that, sometimes uh, it's, it makes your life difficult, or you actually go and break master. And we know what happens when you break master. Everyone flips the tables, and, and no one, because no, no one can work right. We block the team. So what we want to do is always, again, pull from a working copy of master, and for each commit, if possible, run our tests. Now, if you use it, it can be a bit of a headache, right? Like copying those com, uh, those configs across. But if you use Bamboo, it'll do it automatically for you and it will trigger it with each commit as well. So you're always getting that real-time feedback uh, <coughs> that w of whether you've broken your build or not. And so when you bring it back into master, again, we're in a nice releasable state. Now, there's only so much you can automate, and we still need to bring humans into the process, uh, human judgment to be able to catch things like inefficient code or technical debt. So uh, the third principle here is pull requests. We want to make sure that people are reviewing each other's code, sharing those practices. 
The way it works simply is uh, when someone's ready to get their branch and saying, hey, we, I want to merge this now, I think I'm done, they open that and ask their team for a peer, peer review and someone will go through, look at it, if it's good to go, we'll then merge it through. Uh, this is what it looks like in the source code management tool. This is our product Bitbucket server and you can see there's a diff here, someone will go in and inline comment, give some feedback around that. And it's, it's a really important thing. I mean, you saw in the opening video from Splunk, you know, they, they really use this to get that culture of doing peer reviews. Firstly, mainly to share the knowledge around. Um, it also helps catch bugs, you know, if you get a second pair of eyes on it. Uh, it might also even validate better um, the implementation against the original requirements put in the issue. Um, stops people pushing things up in, in silos as well. Uh, and overall, it makes people um, look after the code in a better way. So when they come back to it, or someone else in the team comes back to it, it's in a better state. So more maintainable code means we'll get better quality and ultimately better, better speed. So just to recap those three, those three principles, feature branching, one-to-one -one relationship between what's the issue and what's happening in the code, continuous integration, so we know uh, we're, we're trying to keep master uh, in a releasable state as much as possible, and pull requests to make sure that we're getting that, that culture of reviewing each other's code through. Now, I've skimmed across a lot of these uh, topics in Git, so if you want to go into a more of a deep dive into Git, we've got a whole microsite there, lasting.com slash Git. Um, but I want to get back to the main story here, which is the feature. Releasing is tough, right? We get to the release, there's stuff that's left out of it, there's stuff that's broken, and uh, there's stuff that's going in there that uh, didn't get any reviews. So what have we done to do this? There's a lot of, there's a lot of over, you can feel a lot of overhead coming up in here, right? Like checking through all of this stuff all the time for your issues. Um, unfortunately, we've, we've, we've tried to automate as much of this as possible with this feature called Release Hub. So you go to your releases in Jira software, at the very top, it's just, it provides a high-level overview. Typically, you want to see how we're going with our release, how far are we from it, uh, and um, you know, as in Jira, you can track a lot more detail in the, in the statuses, so you can look into, the, into example, for example, here in, in progress, there's how many issues are in QA versus development. Um, and what I want to focus on here is we've clicked this tab here called, it says there are 73 issues done, and what that's, what's, that is showing is in this release, we've got these 73 issues that people have marked as done, and as you can see over on the far right here, at every issue line, we've put the development artifacts in there side by side. So you can look at that done issue and go, um, where's, how many commits has it got? Has it got a pull request? Is it passing or failing its builds? Is it deployed? Uh, and you can click into these and get even more information without having to click out to the other tool. So in this example, we clicked on the little cloud icon on, on the right here, and it shows me all the deployments, the environments I've gone to, their statuses, but this is still a lot of work, right? 73 issues, and you're having to go through and like check them line by line all the time. And this is where we sort of flip this to just show you the exceptions. So I've got this tab over here called the warnings section. And what the warnings do is very much, again, focusing on, these, on, on what, what people are saying is done and ready to go and pulling out the exceptions. So we look for issues that are done that don't have a pull request. And we then, we then pop a warning. We're looking for issues that are done that are failing their builds. Again, you don't want to release with uh, red builds. And also, we're looking for issues that are done that have skipped their code review. So this warnings tab will, will bucket these warnings up for you by detecting those. So you can see in this section here, unreviewed code. All the issues that are done that have skipped their, um, their reviews and don't have, a, don't have a pull request. So they're actually not on, your ma on master. Don't want to release that. And then another category example here, failing builds, all these things marked as done, as you can see on the far right there, the red build icon coming up there. Again, you don't want to release that, something's gonna go wrong. Um, so the idea here is to get, um, oh, sorry, another point here is uh, we've, not everyone does these practices, so you can actually go in and manage these warnings and turn things off. We have customers who tell us they, they, they do do pull requests, they promise they do, um, but they do them over the shoulder, they don't want to do them inside the product. Um, so you can, you can turn these off. Um, but really, the, the game here is to get the warnings to zero, at which point we can look at, stand back and look at this and go, the 106 issue is done. Um, I'm not getting any warnings. Looks like the pull requests are good. Things have been reviewed. Things are, are passing their builds. And we can then proceed and release. Um, now, if you hook it up with Bamboo, you can program it to um, also run through and actually ro uh, roll out that deployment for you. But that's, I guess that's, what, that's where we've got to this, this section here, where it, which is now about, we're a lot, it's a lot clearer as to whether we are ready to release, and we're able to do that with a lot more confidence. 
um, with less less problems as well. We, we we're, we're doing this with those we're getting those three practices, which we, we should ship with better quality. Um, and because of all this automation, it's saving you a huge amount of time having to check through your releases and making sure things are right. Um, you can go to it again in the sidebar. There's a little ship icon on the on the far left um, to get to Release Hub. Um, it's available in cloud and Jira software, and on server, it's been available since Jira 6.4. Um, now, does this that? So I guess now we've seen how this feature can help you get more confident that your release is ready to go. Um, how does it actually help you in terms of productivity? Now, we did a study between uh, of our customers that have hooked up Jira software and Bitbucket in cloud, and we wanted to see whether their metrics are actually increasing. So what we found is that they, they do. They release 14% more often, and they close 23% more issues. So not only do your metrics go up, um, you know, these sort of features also, the teams really enjoy it, so the teams tend to be happier as, 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 they, as they're using them. Um, so if you want to try out our products, any of these other products, um, I think a number of you have been using Jira, so if you want to try it, uh, Bitbucket or Bamboo, elastin.com slash software. Uh, if you want to know more about Agile, we've got a nice uh, microsite called the Agile Coach, so elastin.com slash Agile. And on this particular feature, if you want more information, elastin.com slash release hub. Thank you.